Hello everyone, this is Stefan coming to you from inside the comic dog house. You may notice from a change from my previous videos where I am now in a different area. This is the part of my house in the basement that's dedicated to working on comic books. And I hope to set up a nice space here where I can do the videos and continue to, to work on, on my video making skills and, um, and, and just keep on improving as I go. So the a question that I get asked a lot, and this is the topic of this video, is what books do I collect for my own PC, my own personal collection? And the answer to that has changed over time. I collected Fantastic Four for a while, and then I collected Large Silver Age Keys, and, and eventually I moved on from both of those. And right now, the focus that I have is, is putting money into books that I see as long-term investments, not just short-term, quick bang for the buck type things. But my idea is that, and, and those of you who, who know me have heard me talk like about this before, is that if I get hit by a bus down the road, I want my family to have books that they can send off to auction and, um, and raise enough cash to you know pay off the car and, and pay down the mortgage and stuff like that. So, so these are longer term investment books. And these are the ones that I am personally betting on uh, to, to continue to rise and go up and outperform the market. So um, I just got a group of books in. Uh, I got about half of them in. Another half is gonna come next week. So that I'm gonna call this part one. And there should be another video coming within the next week or two with part two of of this purchase because the video would, would be too long as well if I did it all at once. So the first uh, thing that, I fo that I'm focusing on is the strong female characters in Marvel. So this is the, for example, first Gwen Stacy covers. Excuse the glare. I have to figure out how to, how to navigate the lighting and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it's... Uh, I think this is a solid investment. It's I don't see this book going down at all, and I see it continuing to rise as um, as the years go on, not just months, but but years down the road. And in the same theme, and I got these books together. Um, another book that I see as having a bright future is this one with the with an iconic Medusa cover, not her first appearance. But it's sort of like X-Men 50, where the cover itself is uh, is a big part of the appeal of the book. Um, you know, of Polaris first appears in 49, and Medusa appears in other places, Fantastic Four um, before this. But uh, this is the cover that everyone remembers. And I had chances to buy this book before. I'm kind of kicking myself in high grade, and I never pulled the trigger on it. So that's one theme that uh, that you know kind of dictates what I purchase and um, and you know the, the auction was moving along and I, this is kind of bizarre but because um, up until this point I was focusing on the strong female characters etc things that you know that that Marvel's going to build a franchise around and then I pick up like Crocodile freaking Dundee and Spider-Man like um, it's not my favorite comic at all, but I, I got it for a reasonable price. And first appearances in the Spider-Man series, or all the main series now that the Mar Marvel movies are really kicking into gear, those first appearances that have not been tapped into uh, four movies have potential. This book may just sit where it is in value. It's possible. But if you know, if something happens and, and that book starts to go up, then this investment will start looking really good. So, if, you know, that's the type of book that I get if the price is right only, and the price was right this time. Another example, uh, X-Men, we all know the X-Men movies are coming around. So first appearance, in this case, Cobalt Man, um, high grade copy, and 
again, I'll, I'll only take a book like this if the price is right and I'll put it aside and who knows if, um, if there's something that comes up down the road then then it's looking really good but i'm never going to lose on it like the worst case scenario is that it'll be a small smaller profit than i figured uh or smaller increase in value not profit increase in value uh than i figured at the point where um you know where i uh, where the the book is turned over by my family now the other big theme and this dictates a lot of my buying is going to be like really, really prominent in the next video as well, is I'm betting big on Stan Lee's signed books. And I've had a lot of Stan Lee's signed Silver Age books through the years, and you know those are great things to have. But they're really high in, in price right now. So the ones that I'm getting are books like this that I love. I, I, I love owning this. I love the cover with uh, with Mary Jane and and uh, Gwen Stacy and Black Cat. Like there, and this one is dual signed by J. Scott Campbell and Stan Lee. Um, I, I just see it as a can't go wrong prospect. It like Stan Lee books. Like he signed his he put a signature on tens of thousands of books. He was appearing at all the conventions. He was signing books. Back in the 70s, when I was first collecting comics, I remember my comic book store brought Stan Lee in and he signed a whole bunch of Raws on the spot. So they're not uncommon, but there are never going to be more of them. The amount that there are is the amount that there are. And what will happen is people eventually are going to start putting them away more and more. And I've already noticed that there's fewer Stan Lee signed books, like even if you look on eBay, than there were prior to when he passed away. So I, I think that trend is going to continue, at least I'm betting on it. I don't have a crystal ball, can't see into the future. This is just my take on it. Uh, but I'm putting my money on uh, the fact that, or the belief that those books are going to become increasingly rare, harder to get, and Harder to get with uh, demand means, you know, increase in value. So I, I see it, those as being a safe investment. And here is another one that kind of combines a couple of elements again um, with Rogue on the covers. This is another J dual sign J. Scott Campbell's Stan Lee book, um, Stan Lee sign book. And I, there's a lot of these types of titles that, that have the dual signature. Um, I'm being pretty selective. I happen to like this cover. I like the characters in the cover. Um, there's a lot of them where I just, uh, I, I just don't like them very much. And I have to like owning the book in order to buy it. Otherwise, it's a bit of a waste of time. And speaking of liking buying books, the next two are kind of a, a matched set. Again, dual sign J. Scott Campbell and Stan Lee. And this is an Electra, Electra One from 2017 series. Um, and this book is, is you know, a newer book again, like the other one, which means that it's not ridiculous in in price right now. And I see it as as being nothing but going up. Like, uh, you know, the books like that are, are are great and and even the worst case scenario and it just goes up a little bit at least i enjoy owning it so this is the other cover or one of the other covers there's many covers to it so i'll just put them up together it's cover a cover b both signed by stan lee and j scott campbell so those books are are going to just go straight into my personal collection boxes and and they will hide out there for a long time. Uh, if you know me, you can always ask and I, I'm more than happy to pull them out so you can take a look at them if you're stopping by for anything. So that's um, that's part one of this video on books that I collect. As I said, part two will be coming out in a week or two and I will get into even more books like this and a lot more Stanley signatures and a lot more cool stuff to come. Thanks for watching.